Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Ninja Assassins. This movie tells the story of a ninja who ran away from the ninja school that had raised him. One day, he returns to avenge someone he once loved. Will his revenge mission succeed? Let's find out in Ninja Assassins. Ninja Assassins begins by showing a Yakuza clan leader in Osaka who gets an envelope filled with black sand. According to rumors, whoever gets an envelope filled with black sand will meet his death soon because the envelope filled with black sand is a sign that the recipient of the envelope will be killed by a clan of cold-blooded assassin ninja. Since the story of the assassin ninja clan was just a legend dating back thousands of years, the Yakuza leader only thought the envelope filled with black sand was a joke. However, when the Yakuza leader and one of his henchmen underestimated the warning envelope containing the black sand, suddenly the Yakuza minion's head was cut by something from behind the shadows. In just a matter of minutes, the Yakuza clan leader and all his men were killed by a clan of assassin ninjas who are always on the move and carry out their actions from behind the shadows. Once again, the existence of the assassin ninja clan which has only been considered a legend by modern society has proven their existence that has never been eroded by the changing times. Then the scene switches to showing a Europol agent named Mika explaining something to her boss, Maslow. Mika reveals that she has found a connection between several assassinations of the most influential political figures in the government with the Azunu clan which she believes to be a clan of assassin ninja. In her opinion, the Azunu clan has always been consistent in setting prices to all clients who need their services. Because of that, Mika can conclude that the Azunu clan is the mastermind behind the massacre at a Yakuza club in Osaka that occurred some time ago. Maslow seems to doubt the results of the investigation proposed by Mika, because the existence of the Azunu clan is still considered a mere legend. The scene then switches to somewhere in Berlin. Seen a man was about to wash his clothes in the laundry and not far from him, a woman seemed to have trouble with the washing machine and asked him for help. When the man approached the woman to help, the woman asked the man something, then swiftly attacked the man with a knife. They were then involved in a fierce fight, until finally the laundry guard who wanted to check the situation in the laundry room found the room was empty. Blood was seen flowing from one of the washing machines and when he approached the washing machine, a human body was seen inside. The next day, when Maslow was having lunch with Mika, Maslow revealed to his subordinates that he had investigated Mika's theory and managed to get important information about an ancient secret organization called the Nine Clans. Maslow said that a KGB agent named Alexei Sabatin was trying to uncover the Nine Clans organization that was involved in a series of murders of the most influential people around the world since decades ago, but everyone thinks that Sabatin is just making it up and has a mental disorder. Meanwhile, the man involved in a heated fight at the laundry last night was seen entering his apartment. The man was named Rezo and had been living in Berlin for some time. Rezo is a ninja and has a complete ninja arsenal hidden all over his apartment. Rezo remembered his past when he was an orphan who was introduced by Lord Azunu in front of his students. Lord Azunu explained about the life and path of the Azunu clan ninja which will be their way of life until the end of life to Rezo and all his students. As a child, Rezo and other students had to undergo very heavy physical and mental training because Lord Azunu was preparing them all to become cold-blooded and merciless assassin ninjas. However, little Rezo gets a glimmer of warmth and attention from one of his classmates named Kiriko. When Rezo was in pain because of the wounds on his legs that he got during training, Kiriko with great care treated the wounds on Rezo's legs, which still remained until Rezo grew up. The scene then moves and shows Mika visiting Sabatin's house and being warmly welcomed by Mrs. Sabbath. Mika inquiries about Sabatin's investigation into the connection of the Nine Clans to the Prime Minister's death. Mrs. Sabatin revealed that her husband got into a lot of trouble while investigating the matter. She said that her husband, who had been quite confident in the investigation, suddenly became very frightened when the results of his investigation into the actions of the Nine Clans became more prominent. Mrs. Sabatin said her husband started installing extra locks on all the doors and windows in their house. Her husband also installed CCTV cameras and motion sensors in various places. Not only that, her husband installed lights in all corners of the house and asked that all lights be turned on and never allow shadowy areas or blind spots that would allow someone to hide. One day, a man met Sabatin and the two got into a pretty serious conversation. Mrs. Sabatin never knew what her husband and the man were discussing. But for sure, Sabatin looked very frightened after talking to the man. Mrs. Sabatin revealed that shortly after the mysterious man's arrival to meet her husband, a sudden power outage occurred in their house and left the house in complete darkness and at the same time, Sabatin had died. Mrs. Sabatin did not give further details about the chronology of her husband's death to Mika. 
Still, she gave the Europol agent the entire file of her husband's investigation into the actions of the nine clans. When Mika checks Sabatin's investigation files, she finds evidence of the existence of the assassin ninja clan and Rezo's figure appeared on CCTV footage at Sabatin's house, shortly before the man's death. The next day, Mika who was in her office was visited by one of her superiors named Zabransky. The man asked Mika about the possibility that Maslow's movements looked suspicious. But Mika replied that there was nothing strange about Maslow's behavior. When Mika and Maslow meet outside the office, Maslow reveals that Zabransky also came to him and asked the same thing about Mika. Mika then assumed that certain parties were watching the two of them because of their investigation related to the nine clans and would try to stop their investigation. Maslow also thought so because the actions of the nine clans were related to the most influential people in the world. The assassin clans are protected by powerful people around the world and ask Mika to increase vigilance. Meanwhile elsewhere, Rezo recalls his past with Kiriko. At that time, Rezo found that Kiriko was cutting the bonsai rope and said that Kiriko would get in trouble for doing so. However, Kiriko said that every living thing, including bonsai plants, has a heart and has the right to choose its own path in life. Rezo, who innocently thought that he didn't have a heart in other people, was directed by Kiriko to listen to his heartbeat. Kiriko said that all humans have hearts, as well as herself and Rezo. After that, young Rezo had to undergo rigorous training to improve the sharpness of his sense of hearing. Lord Azunu ordered Rezo to wear an eye patch for a whole year and do everything blindfolded to get used to the dark because a ninja must be able to fight and survive in any situation. At first Rezo found it difficult, but over time, he was able to adjust and was able to fight against his opponents just by relying on his rapidly increasing sense of hearing. Even Rezo could hear Kiriko's heartbeat which was in sync with his own, even though they were far apart. One day, Kiriko who managed to subdue her opponent was ordered to slash her opponent with a knife. However, because Kiriko refused, Lord Azunu injured her face and locked her in the punishment chamber. Rezo, who felt sorry for Kiriko, secretly visited her and gave her water to drink in the afternoon. One night when it rains heavily, Kiriko tries to escape from the ninja school of the Azunu clan. Rezo, knowing this, tries to convince Kiriko to stay because the consequences that will be faced by students who try to escape are executions. But Kiriko remained determined to leave the Azunu clan, then climbed the wall behind her. The scene then switches to the present, where Rezo already knows about Mika and also the woman's address. On the other hand, Maslow, who is often suspected by high-ranking world intelligence agencies after discovering Alexei Sabatin's investigation of the nine clans, tries to warn Mika of the dangers that may come soon. Maslow supplies Mika with a gun just in case and asks her to find a safe hiding place. However, when Mika arrived at her apartment, there had been a power outage in the entire apartment building. Mika, who had anticipated this, was even more surprised by the discovery of an envelope filled with black sand in her apartment. Before long, she suddenly came under attack in the pitch black situation. Luckily, her life was saved after the assassin's sword was blocked by an iron chain that appeared in the darkness. It turned out that there were two ninjas in Mika's pitch black apartment. One of the ninja tries to save Mika and after he manages to knock out the ninja who was intent on killing Mika, the ninja warns that there will be more to come and they will not stop until Mika is completely killed. After that, the rescue ninja showed his true figure from behind the shadows and it turned out that the ninja was Rezo. Mika who recognized Rezo from the CCTV footage at Alexei Sabatin's house was shocked that Rezo saved her life. After that, the two of them left before the other assassin ninjas came and killed them. The scene then switches to showing a flashback where Kiriko, who was running away, was chased and captured by Lord Azunu's disciples. Kiriko is then tied up and tortured for her defiance. After that, Lord Azunu ordered one of his flagship students named Takeshi to execute Kiriko in front of all his students so that no more students dared to follow in Kiriko's footsteps who tried to escape from the Azunu clan. Takeshi, who knew that Rezo and Kiriko were close friends, then stabbed Kiriko in the heart while carving a sly grin at Rezo. Kiriko was finally killed and Rezo was unable to do anything to help the girl. The flashback continues and shows Rezo who has officially become a ninja assassin and is about to carry out his first assassination mission. Rezo gets a target that is quite difficult to beat. However, after being involved in a fierce battle, he finally managed to kill the target and took the target's gold watch, which he brought to Lord Azunu. The clan leader asked Rezo to keep the watch as a reminder that he was already part of the legendary assassin ninja clan. After that, Lord Azunu ordered Rezo to execute a Kanoichi who tried to escape like Kiriko. Rezo, who immediately remembered the tragic fate that his best friend had to suffer for trying to escape from the Azunu clan, decided to attack Lord Azunu and the ninja assassin squad who were in that place. 
Reizo managed to injure Lord Azuna's face. Still, he was overwhelmed by the squad of ninja assassins who also had abilities like himself because he was alone. Reizo who was getting more desperate finally fell from the top of the building. Reizo, who managed to survive the incident, then decided to continue training and thwart all the Azunu clan's assassination attempts. Back in the present, Mika and Reizo decide to hide in a motel for a while. Reizo then asked Mika to clean herself without using soap and change clothes. After that, he spread cigarette smoke on Mika's body to hide her scent because ninja assassins have a sharp sense of smell like a wolf. Assassin ninjas could find their targets just by smelling their scent. Mika, who thinks that Reizo wants to take revenge on the Azunu clan, then contacts Marlo so they can meet. Mika and Reizo meet with Marlo to discuss the situation they are facing in a remote place. Even so, Reizo sensed that something was amiss at their meeting this time, as he was suspicious of Marlo. Sure enough, not long after, special forces immediately attacked Reizo with a high-voltage electric shock and paralyzed him instantly. Reizo is then taken by Maslow and Europol's special forces to a hidden location for interrogation. Mika, who felt betrayed by Maslow, immediately demanded an explanation from him. Maslow said that he had no other choice because those in power ordered him to arrest Reizo to reveal the involvement of the Azunu Ninja Assassin Clan in a series of assassinations of important people. Even so, Maslow said that he would stay by Mika's side and would try to protect her. He then gives Mika a tracking device, so he and the Europol Special Forces can find her if the situation worsens. After that, Mika approached Reizo who was being watched by Maslow and other Europol agents. Reizo tells them that the Azunu clan ninjas already know their whereabouts and will attack the place soon. Mika, who tries to warn Maslow and the rest of the army about this, is thought to be making it up. But soon, the electricity went out and the whole place was engulfed in darkness. Mika tried to return to where Reizo was being held to help him, while the troops who had previously ignored Mika's warning looked confused and had difficulty adjusting to the darkness. Unbeknownst to them, an army of ninja assassins had prepared to slaughter them all. Mika managed to unlock Reizo's shackles just before a ninja was about to swing a sword at him. Reizo then told Mika to come out and save herself. Maslow and Europol's special forces seem to have a hard time dealing with the attacks of ninjas who are highly trained to fight in the dark, while Reizo tries to fight off a swarm of ninja assassins of the Azunu clan alone. Even though he is alone, Reizo can face the swarms of ninja assassins thanks to the hard training he always does every day. Even so, the Azunu clan ninja troops continued to arrive and their numbers grew. Over time Reizo was getting more and more pressed and inevitably, he was trying to run away to save himself. Meanwhile, Mika who managed to escape from the building and intends to save herself by driving a car gets a barrage of attacks from ninja assassins who will never stop hunting for her before Mika actually dies. On the other hand, Reizo, who had also managed to get out, was involved in a fierce battle with ninjas on the streets of Berlin. One ninja managed to immobilize Reizo by slashing his stomach, and when the ninja was about to kill him, Mika came and hit the ninja to death. After that, Mika took the seriously injured Reizo to an inn to hide because Reizo was reluctant to be taken to the hospital. Inside the inn, Mika and Reizo set a plan. Reizo then asked Mika to hide while he would surrender himself to the Azunu clan. Shortly after that, Mika reveals to Maslow who managed to find her whereabouts, that the Azunu clan managed to capture Reizo and bring him to their base. Meanwhile elsewhere, Reizo tries to heal himself with the Azunu clan's secret healing technique during his journey to the Azunu clan's headquarters. Arriving there, Reizo was immediately brought before Lord Azunu who considered him to have humiliated the honor of the Azunu clan. He sentenced the student to death which he had hoped to be the only candidate for the Azunu clan leader who deserved to replace him. When Reizo was about to be executed, Takeshi realized that Reizo was carrying a tracking device inside his body. It turns out that Mika and Reizo have planned this so that Mika and the Europol Special Forces can track down Reizo's whereabouts in the secret headquarters of the Azunu clan. Not long after, Europol's Special Forces invaded the secret headquarters of the Azunu clan and were able to fight with the ninja assassins because they knew how to fight by relying on darkness and shadows. The Europol troops illuminated the entire area of the Azunu clan's headquarters with flares, making it difficult for the ninja to hide in the dark. Mika, who came with the Europol troops, immediately freed Reizo. After that, Reizo engages in a deadly duel with Takeshi whose abilities are almost equal to Lord Azunu. However, Reizo who intends to avenge the death of Kuriko has been training very hard to wait for the moment to come face to face with Takeshi. Despite fierce resistance from Takeshi, Reizo was finally able to subdue the man and avenge Kuriko's death. Still badly injured and covered in blood, Reizo tries to fight Lord Azunu whose fighting abilities seem timeless even though his body is starting to age. 
Lord Azunu could easily parry and reverse Rezo's attack, until he was finally pushed and managed to be paralyzed. When Lord Azunu was about to kill Rezo with his sword, Mika came and shot the clan leader, saving Rezo. However, Lord Azunu who suddenly disappeared into the darkness to avoid Mika's attack appeared behind her and stabbed her right in the heart. Immediately, Rezo was furious to see Mika killed in front of him, then got up and returned to fight Lord Azunu with all his remaining strength. After a fierce and deadly duel, Rezo finally managed to kill Lord Azunu with a deadly shadow blending move that he never used because it was the most deadly move of the Azunu clan and was only used to kill their targets. Rezo, who still heard Mika's heartbeat, then carried her from the flames. Outside, Maslow and Europol's special forces managed to defeat the ninja assassins of the Azunu clan. Rezo then tells Maslow that Mika survived Lord Azunu's deadly attack and is still alive because she has a unique body condition, her heart is on the right side of her chest. When the Europol special forces had left the secret base of the Azunu clan and the fire had been extinguished, Rezo stayed behind and climbed the wall that Kiriko had used to escape from there. On top of that wall, he saw a beautiful view of the mountainous area surrounding the place. Rezo smiled and for the first time in his life, he breathed in the fragrance of the freedom that had been Kiriko's dream. The film ends.